Whitney's growing worry about her daughter Rachel's strange behavior compelled her to take serious measures to safeguard her child. With a determined spirit, Whitney decided to install a hidden camera in their home to monitor the situation discreetly. The footage she later reviewed shattered her heart, revealing a truth that was difficult to process. In 2011, the Whitney family from Springdale, Arkansas, welcomed a significant milestone with the birth of their daughter Rachel. Enveloping Whitney and Chris with immense joy and introducing a fresh dynamic to their family life, as Whitney was immersed in law school, securing a trustworthy caregiver for Rachel was crucial. After posting a request for recommendations on Facebook, Whitney's former high school acquaintance, Melissa Medina, showed an interest in the nanny position. Despite hearing positive remarks about Melissa and reviewing her social media profile for a deeper insight, Whitney knew the importance of being meticulous in choosing someone to look after her child. She even went as far as verifying references which reassured her of Melissa's reliability. However, the hidden camera Whitney installed would soon reveal a devastating reality that contradicted the initial smooth introduction between Melissa and Rachel. Whitney, not just a law student but a proactive mother and wife, had entrusted Melissa with Rachel's care. Feeling somewhat at ease as she and Chris resumed their professional lives, initially, everything seemed normal when they came back from work, but a subtle disturbance in Rachel's behavior that evening sparked concern. Unable to determine the root cause of the change, Whitney's anxiety intensified. Was Rachel simply ill, or was she struggling with the new daily routine? These questions plagued Whitney and Chris, as they observed Rachel, usually vibrant and energetic beginning to take unusually long naps, concerned they might be overthinking as new parents often do. Whitney sought a professional opinion and took Rachel to the pediatrician, hoping to clarify her daughter's sudden lethargy and discomfort. Although the doctor did not find any physical ailments and suggested that Rachel might be experiencing typical separation anxiety, Whitney remained unconvinced, sensing that the issue was more than just usual child development challenges. As separation anxiety often leads to clinginess and distress during a parent's absence, Rachel's symptoms didn't fully align, leading Whitney to trust her instincts that something else was amiss. Whitney had been grappling with persistent doubts and unease about her daughter Rachel's recent behavior, which seemed increasingly peculiar and concerning. Despite her attempts to brush aside these worries, Whitney's maternal instincts kept nagging at her, suggesting that something was amiss. More specifically, she began to suspect Melissa, her nanny, might be at the heart of Rachel's troubling change in demeanor. Compelled to find out the truth, Whitney decided to take matters into her own hands. After much thought, she purchased a sophisticated clock equipped with a hidden camera, hoping it would reveal whether Melissa was behaving inappropriately in her absence. With a sense of dread, Whitney installed the covert device at a strategic location in their home. Reviewing the camera footage later, Whitney felt a rush of shock and anger wash over her as her worst fears materialized on screen. The video revealed Melissa's deceitful behavior, exploiting the hidden lens to her advantage, all the while engaging in actions that were deeply disturbing, her hands shaking. Whitney connected the camcorder to her computer, her heart racing as she prepared to view the playback. The agonizing wait for the footage to appear seemed like an eternity. She contemplated the possibility that Melissa might have discovered and tampered with the device, a thought that only added to her anxiety. When the footage finally played, it confirmed Whitney's darkest suspicions. It showed that Melissa had left young Rachel strapped in a jumper for too long, unattended hours. The video captured the little girl's increasing distress. She was left hungry, thirsty, and in considerable discomfort, immobilized for hours. It became apparent that Melissa had chosen to prioritize her own cruel intentions over the child's well-being. Further footage captured Melissa's aggressive behavior, including slapping and violently shaking Rachel in an attempt to silence her cries. This revelation was a painful betrayal for Whitney. The severity of Melissa's actions pointed to a potential case of shaken baby syndrome a serious form of abusive head trauma that can lead to severe brain damage and other life-threatening consequences. 
this condition is often hard to detect as it might not immediately present symptoms unless the abuse is directly witnessed. The hidden camera footage provided a devastating insight into the cause of Rachel's recent behavioral changes. It showed the violent methods Melissa used to stop the child's crying, which were horrifying to Whitney, distraught by the evidence of abuse. Whitney immediately rushed Rachel to the emergency room to ensure her safety and well-being. Determined to see justice served, Whitney contacted the authorities, ready to take legal action against Melissa for her actions. Her resolve was firm. She would do whatever it took to protect her daughter and prevent such atrocities from happening to any other child. Damage, a testament to her resilience. Still, the psychological scars remained requiring ongoing therapy to help her cope with the trauma of her ordeal. Melissa, caught abusing Rachel on camera, was oblivious to the fact that her routine workday would soon unravel dramatically. Upon exiting her vehicle at work, she was met by a swarm of police officers who quickly apprehended her, escorting her directly to the local police station. Whitney, an observant neighbor, captured the decisive moment of Melissa's arrest from her vantage point. Documenting the critical transition as Melissa was taken into custody, Melissa was now confronting the repercussions of her reprehensible actions against a defenseless child. Yet, due to this being her first recorded offense, the legal system could only impose a Class D felony charge for endangering the welfare of a minor, the mildest felony classification available. Consequently, the potential penalties Melissa faced were minimal, with a maximum of three months in jail post-incarceration. There was even a chance that she could return to work in childcare and possibly have her record cleared. This leniency underscored a glaring issue in the system. Without a national registry for child abusers, individuals like Melissa, with prior offenses against children, could potentially re-offend. Motivated by this systemic flaw, Whitney embarked on a determined campaign to close this dangerous loophole, harnessing the power of the media. Whitney shared her alarming experience widely, aiming to elevate public consciousness about the urgent need for protective measures against child abusers, recognizing that media exposure alone might not suffice to prevent future abuses by individuals like Melissa. Whitney pursued a more concrete solution. She advocated for legislative change in Arkansas, proposing the establishment of a pioneering child abuse registry. This registry would catalog individuals convicted of child abuse, providing crucial data to safeguard children from potential harm. Throughout her advocacy, Whitney utilized her legal expertise to articulate compelling, constitutionally sound arguments in favor of the registry. Her efforts galvanized community support, rallying hundreds to her cause. As for Melissa, she opted to remain silent throughout the ordeal neither engaging with the media nor offering any explanation for her actions, leaving her motives enveloped in uncertainty. However, one outcome was definite. Her career as a nanny was irrevocably over. Whitney, driven by a blend of professional knowledge and personal commitment, was relentless in her mission to ensure that no child would suffer abuse at the hands of a caregiver again. Meanwhile, young Rachel's journey to recovery highlighted both her physical and emotional resilience, reminding everyone involved of the profound impact of their efforts to protect the most vulnerable. The Whitney family, vibrant and spirited, recently shared in an interview that Rachel, their young daughter, is an endless source of energy and joy, always lighting up the room with her smiles, despite concerns about potential psychological effects due to shaken baby syndrome. The family remains steadfast, ready to tackle any forthcoming challenges with love and unwavering support. Transitioning to another poignant narrative, let's consider the life of Victoria, a spirited nine-year-old who finds solace and joy in her school recess. She revels in playing dodgeball, skipping rope, and befriending peers, which provides a welcome diversion from her home life adversities. Although she faces difficulties in mathematics and experiences anxiety during tests, Victoria is a committed student, aspiring to become a veterinarian to care for animals, a testament to her compassionate nature, contrasting sharply with her school experiences. Victoria's home life is challenging. She and her father, Rodrigo, live under the shadow of poverty, 
still reeling from the tragic loss of her mother and two younger siblings in a catastrophic accident three years earlier. The accident occurred during a bus ride home from a beach outing, a ride Rodrigo could barely afford, which ended tragically when a tire blowout sent their bus careening off a cliff. Victoria and Rodrigo were the only survivors, leaving them with deep emotional and physical scars that profoundly changed their lives, despite these overwhelming challenges. Rodrigo has devoted himself to nurturing and supporting Victoria, spending countless hours at her side during her recovery and beyond. Victoria's health recently became a concern when she began experiencing discomfort in her private areas, a serious issue that required the involvement of authorities. As the distressing truth unfolded, it sent shockwaves through her community, revealing the harsh reality of what Victoria had been silently enduring. On another front, Rodrigo, only 35, faced abrupt unemployment without severance, plunging him into despair and exacerbating the family's struggles. A chronic leg injury from a previous accident further hindered his ability to secure physically demanding work, and the trauma from the bus accident transformed him from a sociable person to one who was withdrawn and quiet, despite her youth and limited grasp of the full extent of her father's troubles. Victoria sensed the profound shift in his demeanor. Eager to alleviate some of his burdens, she began taking on more responsibilities around the house, diligently managing chores and helping wherever she could, showcasing her resilience and deep love for her father. Details, urging Victoria to be open about her symptoms, understanding the gravity of the situation, Clara immediately contacted the school nurse who in turn recommended that Victoria be taken to a medical facility for proper evaluation, Victoria's father, Rodrigo. Despite his usual distant demeanor and the strain of his dual jobs, was contacted at his workplace. Although initially perplexed and frustrated by the interruption, Rodrigo's concern for his daughter's well-being took precedence, prompting him to leave work early, a decision he seldom made. Upon arriving at the school, he was briefed by Clara on the severity of Victoria's condition. The drive to the hospital was tense. With Rodrigo grappling with a mix of guilt for his earlier outbursts and fear for his daughter's health, at the hospital, after a series of tests, it was discovered that Victoria was suffering from a severe urinary tract infection, which had been exacerbated by delay in seeking treatment. The doctors prescribed a course of antibiotics and emphasized the importance of timely medical intervention in future instances, Rodrigo. Confronted with the reality of his daughter's ordeal and the role his own actions may have played in delaying her decision to seek help, felt a profound sense of remorse. The incident served as a wake-up call for Rodrigo, who realized that his continuous exhaustion and irritability were not only affecting his health but were also impairing his relationship with Victoria, determined to mend their relationship and improve the atmosphere at home. Rodrigo began to reassess his work commitments and explore ways to be more present and supportive. Victoria, on her part, experienced a renewed sense of vulnerability but also learned the importance of advocating for her own health. The support from her teacher, Clara, and the medical staff helped her understand that while she often felt alone in her struggles, there were people in her life willing to help. This ordeal not only strengthened her resilience but also deepened her trust in those around her, paving the way for a more open and communicative relationship with her father, the ice, and offer her a sense of belonging. Despite their kind gestures, Victoria found it hard to open up and remain guarded, yet their persistent kindness slowly began to chip away at her isolation, during a particularly probing conversation with Clara. Victoria was subtly coaxed into revealing whether she had discussed her troubling home situation with anyone else. Caught off guard by the question, Victoria hesitated, her pause only serving to heighten Clara's worry and intrigue. Clara, persistent in her questioning, continued to gently press for answers increasing the pressure on Victoria. Eventually, Victoria reluctantly disclosed that her father, Rodrigo, was her only caregiver at home. This disclosure significantly deepened Clara's concern, especially since Rodrigo had never been present at any school meetings. 
and his absence left his character and behaviors enveloped in mystery, in light of the potential risks for children in vulnerable circumstances like Victoria's, Clara cautiously continued to probe, she inquired about any unusual or concerning behaviors Rodrigo might have exhibited at home, faced with these questions, Victoria was overwhelmed by a surge of conflicting emotions, as memories of a day when her father's frustration had erupted violently in her room came flooding back. Unable to voice her fears, she quickly reassured Clara that everything was all right and that the pain from the incident had subsided, desperate to deflect any further suspicion. Despite Victoria's attempts to disguise her distress, Clara's concern only grew. Throughout the day, she observed Victoria's distracted behavior and noted the subtle signs of pain she tried to hide. Deeply troubled by her student's situation, Clara resolved to find a way to intervene and provide support. As days turned into weeks, Victoria continued to suffer in silence, her pain exacerbated by each passing day, making it increasingly difficult for her to confide in anyone. Meanwhile, another teacher, Laura, also picked up on Victoria's distress and approached her for a gentle conversation. Despite Laura's efforts, Victoria, gripped by fear, maintained a facade of normalcy, insisting everything was fine despite the inner chaos sensing that something was seriously wrong. Laura discussed her observations with her colleagues and the school authorities, sharing her concerns about Victoria's well-being. Prompted by the seriousness of the situation, the school initiated an investigation into her home life, determined to uncover the truth and provide necessary support. As the inquiry progressed, Victoria remained caught in her silence, haunted by memories of her mother and the ongoing pain. She missed her mother tremendously, and with each day. Her anguish intensified, her strength waned, and her ability to cope diminished. Most of her time at school was spent in solitude, without friends to engage with or distract her from her inner struggles. Observant mothers of her fellow students began to notice her despondency. They saw her sad expression and downcast demeanor as she walked with her head hung low, approaching her with friendly intentions. They sought to extend warmth and welcome. Hoping to break through her barriers and offer her a sense of inclusion and support, despite the barrier of her isolation, Victoria harbored a deep-seated fear regarding the unstable conditions at home, fully conscious of the significant risks both she and her father were exposed to. In this challenging environment, her teachers played a crucial role maintaining a vigilant watch over her by engaging in consistent dialogue and observing her demeanor meticulously. They noted heightened levels of anxiety in Victoria whenever the conversation veered towards her father, which only intensified their concerns. One particular day, Victoria came to school bearing the familiar, intense pain that had plagued her recently. Abruptly, the pain intensified, reducing her to desperate tears. Clara, the teacher in charge at that moment, swiftly approached her, asking with urgent concern, Victoria, what's wrong, overcome with emotion? Victoria could only reply through her tears, reacting quickly, Clara escorted her to the nurse's office while notifying the school director about the urgent situation, recognizing the severity, the director immediately summoned emergency medical services, at the same time, Victoria's father, Rodrigo, received an urgent call at his workplace, prompting him to rush to his daughter's side. Upon his arrival, he found Victoria crying uncontrollably, trying to soothe her. He gently inquired, My dear, what happened? Tell daddy what's wrong. Amidst her pain and fear, Victoria voiced her wish to go home but also expressed her fear of her father's potential reaction to being called away from work. Her anxiety about his possible anger added to her distress, causing her to cry out again. Rodrigo, seeing his daughter in such a state, was filled with fear and anxiety, heightened by the scrutinizing eyes of the school staff around him. At this tense moment, two police officers entered the room with grim and determined looks. A bewildered and anxious Rodrigo was pulled aside by the officers who solemnly informed him that they had received a report alleging violence involving Victoria. Shocked, Rodrigo struggled to comprehend the accusation. As the officers restrained him, 
announcing that he was being arrested on suspicion of serious assault against a minor, his disbelief turned into frantic protests. Rodrigo vehemently denied the allegations, declaring his love for his daughter and asserting his innocence to all present, despite his pleas. The police proceeded to detain him. Rodrigo's heart shattered as he saw his daughter looking scared and confused while he was led away, his cries for her echoing through the room. Witnessing her father being taken into custody, Victoria was left in a state of shock and turmoil, her emotions overwhelming her as the reality of the situation set in. Victoria was overwhelmed with a profound sense of fear and guilt haunted by the belief that she had inadvertently played a role in her father's arrest. Their combined cries of anguish resonated through the air, merging into a heart-wrenching symphony of despair. The incident sent shockwaves through the school community, sparking deep anxiety among parents concerned for their children's safety. A palpable sense of outrage spread. As many grappled with the distressing possibility of a father inflicting harm on his daughter, in the wake of the incident, Victoria was urgently transported to the hospital to receive essential medical care. Simultaneously, the school's principal found themselves battling to restore calm and order amidst the ensuing turmoil. Rodrigo, meanwhile, found himself in the grip of law enforcement, his mind tormented by the harrowing developments of the day. Leaving the entire school community reeling in shock and worry, sequestered in the confines of a Chilean police station, Enveloped by a tempest of anger and confusion, Rodrigo's foremost concern remained the well-being of his daughter. The accusations leveled against him seemed surreal, as his only desire had been to comfort her and reassure her that all would be well. Instead, he found himself locked away in a stark, unwelcoming cell. Surrounded by officers who seemed indifferent to his protests, I swear, I didn't do anything, Rodrigo pleaded with the authorities his voice thick with urgency and despair, I could never harm my daughter, she is everything to me. The officers responded with skeptical looks, Sir, you must understand that this is a very serious matter, one officer stated firmly, we need to conduct a thorough investigation, if you are innocent, you have nothing to fear, we are simply following protocol. Amid feelings of guilt and humiliation, Rodrigo struggled to accept the grim reality of his circumstances. All I want is to see my daughter. I need to be by her side, especially now, when she is suffering, he implored, but his pleas went unheeded. At that moment, some fellow inmates approached him, curious about his story. What happened, brother? One inquired. Rodrigo took a deep breath, tears streaming down his face as he shared. I was detained while my daughter is seriously ill and in great pain, they suspect I'm responsible, but I swear, I would never harm my little girl. The other detainees looked at him with a mix of skepticism and concern, bro, children are sacred, one commented, if you did harm her, you will face severe consequences. Caught in an increasingly perilous and complex situation, Rodrigo moved to a quieter corner of the cell his heart heavy as he overheard whispered speculations about his case. Doubt and fear gnawed at him, as he contemplated the uncertain future that lay ahead, her father through the glass doors, her face lit up with a mixture of relief and joy. Despite her physical pain, Victoria's spirit soared at the sight of her father, who rushed to her side the moment he was allowed entry. Rodrigo enveloped her in a gentle embrace, careful not to exacerbate her discomfort, all the while tears streamed down his face, mirroring the emotional release both father and daughter felt. At the hospital, Victoria had been under the attentive care of the medical staff. Earlier, when she had been brought in, the medical team had promptly administered pain relief to make her more comfortable. The sight of blood on her clothes had initially shocked her, triggering a deep need for her father's reassuring presence. Despite the compassionate efforts of Clara, Laura, and the hospital director to soothe her, Victoria's anxiety had been palpable, making it difficult for her to calm down without her father, the attending physician, a seasoned professional with a knack for handling pediatric cases, had conducted a meticulous examination, she collected samples with precision, aware of the sensitive nature of the situation. Each step of the process was done with utmost care, but it unavoidably reminded Victoria of her father's absence, 
adding to the stress and fear she felt. When the doctor approached her with a warm smile, asking gently where she hurt, Victoria pointed to her abdomen, her voice tinged with worry. After a careful check, the doctor reassured her that her stomach was fine, but noted a complication of a urinary tract infection. She explained this in a gentle yet clear manner. Ensuring Victoria understood that it was a common issue that could be treated with medication, promising a swift recovery. Additionally, the doctor discussed the signs of puberty Victoria was beginning to show, explaining that this natural process could sometimes cause discomfort. She emphasized confidently that there was no evidence of any assault, much to the relief of everyone involved. Back at school, the director, Clara, and Laura, who had initially harbored suspicions against Rodrigo, felt a profound relief mixed with guilt for having doubted him prematurely. They quickly called the police station, advocating fervently for his immediate release. As the cell door opened, and the guard's remark underscored his innocence, Rodrigo, overwhelmed with emotions, wept, realizing the ordeal was finally over. Rodrigo, a single father who had faced numerous challenges, including job losses and financial difficulties, had always prioritized his daughter's well-being above all. His life had been a testament to resilience and devotion, especially after the tragic loss of other family members, leaving him solely responsible for Victoria, who had survived a severe accident. Now, as he sat by her hospital bed, his heart full of gratitude and relief, Rodrigo was ready to continue their journey together, strengthened by the ordeal they had overcome, in a moment charged with raw emotion. She dashed into his open arms, and together they wept. Their embrace a testament to their enduring bond, overwhelmed by the trials she had faced, Rodrigo vowed to never leave her side again, expressing his regret for the pain she had endured. The school staff, including esteemed teachers and the conscientious director, wasted no time in approaching Rodrigo to express their profound apologies for the unfortunate misunderstanding. A compassionate gynecologist took a moment to reassure Rodrigo that Victoria was physically well and carefully explained the chain of events that led to the misunderstanding, a wave of relief washed over Rodrigo, and he was deeply moved when the school director graciously offered him a position as a janitor, presenting him with the opportunity for a more stable and respectable source of income to support his daughter. With heartfelt gratitude, Rodrigo accepted the job offer, recognizing that it symbolized a new chapter of stability and tranquility for their lives. In the end, Victoria was confirmed to be healthy and Rodrigo was clear of all erroneous charges. The ordeal had only served to strengthen Rodrigo's unwavering love for his daughter, solidifying his belief that nothing could ever sever their bond. After listening to this tale, what are your impressions? We'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. Your insights are valuable to us. Now, prepare for another engaging story as we proceed to the next one, every day after school. Thomas Valero observed his young daughter coming home in tears, and it slowly dawned on him that there was a serious issue at hand. Despite his best efforts to discover the cause of her distress, he was shaken to his core when he finally grasped the seriousness of the situation. Knowing he had to take action, Thomas devised a clever yet somewhat controversial plan to uncover the truth. Starting school is a monumental step for any child. It requires a tremendous amount of support from parents during this crucial transition period. Even though teachers are typically well-trained and capable, the initial phase of school can be quite daunting for a child who must adjust to new routines, unfamiliar faces, and a completely different environment. For some children, coping with these adjustments is particularly difficult, especially if they encounter a strict or unkind teacher. When Thomas noticed his daughter having a tough time adjusting to school, it became vital for him to determine what was causing her such distress. Every parent's primary concern is their child's happiness and well-being, and Thomas was no exception. His concern deepened as he watched his daughter become progressively more upset each day. Initially, Thomas suspected that her tears might be due to nerves about making new friends or the pressure to perform well academically, however. As her discomfort grew over time, it became apparent that there was something more troubling at play. 
his daughter began crying regularly and pleading to stay home from school. This alarming pattern soon evolved into a daily ordeal for the Valero family, with each morning marked by his little girl breaking down in tears. Understandably, Thomas was deeply troubled by his daughter's deteriorating condition. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, as all the enthusiasm and joy gradually faded from his daughter's life. Even more troubling, she seemed increasingly fearful of going to school. Each morning became a test of wills, with his daughter clearly terrified of attending school. It reached a point where she didn't want to go to school at all. As a concerned parent, Thomas tried to communicate with his daughter to understand the root of her fear. Thomas was increasingly worried as he observed a troubling transformation in his daughter, who had always been a bright and sociable child. She was in her first year at Pine Grove Elementary School's kindergarten and had previously thrived in her preschool years. Known for her creativity and her natural ability to connect with others, however, since starting at Pine Grove, she seemed to become a different child, often appearing emotionally distressed and less communicative. The shift was noticeable from the moment she began attending Pine Grove. She had moved from being happy energetic child to someone who frequently seemed upset, a change that deeply concerned Thomas. He began to suspect that something within the school environment, perhaps interactions with peers or a particular teacher, might be affecting her so profoundly. Historically, she had been an excellent student, always coming home with positive reports and high grades, but within a few months at Pine Grove, both her academic performance and overall demeanor had noticeably declined. She seemed anxious and unhappy before and after school, which was entirely out of character for her. Feeling helpless yet determined, Thomas reached a critical point, as any parent would, deeply concerned about his daughter's well-being. The more he attempted to uncover the root cause of her distress, the more she seemed to retreat into herself, unwilling to share what was troubling her. After considerable reflection, Thomas suspected that bullying could be the issue possibly from a classmate or even a teacher, given their stable and happy home life. He was confident the problem wasn't originating from there, but the challenge remained. How could he uncover the truth and help his daughter? Patience is essential, especially when dealing with children in their formative years, a sensitive and pivotal time. As an educator himself, Thomas knew that patience was more than a virtue in these situations. It was a necessity. The situation with his daughter underscored the importance of maintaining patience, even in the face of parental anxiety, to ensure the well-being and proper emotional development of a child. Resolved to resolve the situation, Thomas was prepared to take all necessary steps to help his daughter's school life return to the joyful and enriching experience it ought to be. He understood that these early experiences would significantly shape his daughter's future. Emphasizing the urgency for him to delve deeply into the matter and find a solution, the harsh tone and dismissive words of the teacher that filled the room, it became clear why his daughter had been increasingly withdrawn and unhappy. The recordings revealed not just a lack of support, but an environment that stifled her desire to learn and express herself. Thomas and his wife had always prioritized a nurturing and supportive upbringing for their children. They emphasized the importance of a positive mindset and continuous self-improvement. With a deep commitment to these principles, they worked to cultivate a strong and resilient identity in their two daughters and son, preparing them to meet life's challenges with confidence and grace. However, Thomas was particularly meticulous about the influences that shaped his children's lives. Given the pivotal role of educational settings in child development, he and his wife were acutely aware of the potential negative impacts of an unsupportive teacher. Their worries increased when signs suggested that the difficulties faced by their youngest daughter at school were symptomatic of a broader issue. Amidst growing concern for his daughter's well-being, Thomas knew that passive worry was not enough. His daughter, being timid and reserved, found it hard to articulate her school experiences which only added to his urgency to understand and address the situation effectively. Confronted with the challenge of gaining insight into her classroom experience without being physically present, Thomas brainstormed ways to monitor the situation discreetly. He realized that direct observation was impractical, 
as it could alter the teacher's conduct. After careful consideration, he engineered a small, unobtrusive listening device, which he ingeniously concealed in his daughter's hair accessory. This setup was intended to capture genuine interactions in the classroom without his daughter being conscious of the device, thereby ensuring her day proceeded naturally. This strategic move allowed Thomas to listen firsthand to the classroom dynamics and gather evidence if needed, though he considered the measure extreme. He deemed it essential for protecting his daughter and perhaps other children from unnecessary distress, with his plan in motion. Thomas waited anxiously for his daughter's return from school. His heart was heavy with a mix of hope and apprehension. As soon as she arrived, he was ready to comfort her and delve into the details of her day, eager to take steps toward alleviating the family's growing anxiety. Upon reviewing the recorded audio, Thomas was confronted with the unsettling reality of the teacher's demeaning approach. The gravity of the situation was now undeniable. And it was imperative to act swiftly to advocate for his daughter and ensure a supportive and encouraging learning environment for all students involved. When Thomas heard the recording, his heart plummeted with dismay. The audio laid bare the harsh and unkind demeanor of a teacher who was supposed to foster a nurturing and educational environment. Instead, she wielded her authority to intimidate and belittle her students, a stark revelation that explained his daughter's ongoing distress. With clarity and urgency, Thomas recognized the need for immediate action. The teacher's conduct was not only inappropriate but also potentially damaging to the student's well-being. Feeling a profound sense of duty, Thomas was compelled to address the situation especially considering the trust that he and other parents had vested in this educator had been deeply compromised. The more Thomas listened to the recording, the more his alarm grew. The teacher's approach was excessively harsh, characterized by aggressive yelling and scolding over minor issues that should have been approached with patience and empathy. With each passing moment, Thomas's frustration intensified, Baffled by the teacher's contemptuous treatment of the young students, resolute in his quest for justice and the protection of not just his daughter but all students in the classroom, Thomas opted against a direct confrontation with the teacher, suspecting it would be unproductive. Instead, he decided to bring the matter to the state school board. Confident that they held the appropriate authority and readiness to effectively tackle and amend the misconduct, armed with the recording as solid evidence, Thomas scheduled a meeting with the school board to lay out his case and discuss his daughter's troubling experiences. Despite presenting clear and compelling evidence, the response from the school district was tepid at best. They admitted to disciplining the teacher, but no further actions were promised. This tepid reaction left Thomas profoundly unsettled and concerned for the future. It was disconcerting to witness the lack of initiative from those in power to curb such detrimental behavior in educational settings. The thought of his daughter returning to such an environment was distressing. Determined not to let the matter rest, Thomas contemplated his next steps. He was resolute in his belief that no child should ever have to endure such treatment, armed with determination. He was prepared to do whatever necessary to secure a safe and supportive educational environment for his daughter and her classmates. The struggle was far from over, and Thomas was not ready to back down. Deeply dissatisfied with the lackluster response from the authorities concerning his concerns, the issue was critical and demanded a resolution. Early childhood education, Mrs. Duncan's situation highlighted the critical role teachers play in shaping young minds. Despite the school's initial proposal to move his daughter to another class, Thomas understood that the issue was much broader than just his child's immediate environment. It concerned the overall safety and well-being of every student under Mrs. Duncan's care. As a parent, he felt a profound duty to advocate not only for his daughter but for all her peers. Thomas's frustration intensified as the school failed to offer meaningful support or enact significant reforms in response to the concerns raised. He believed that this lack of action could detrimentally affect the children as long as Mrs. Duncan remained in her position, with her temperament potentially harming the students, though his initial efforts, in conjunction with other worried parents, did not yield immediate results from the school administration. Thomas and his allies did not relent. 
their perseverance started to pay off as the community began to take notice. Stories of Mrs. Duncan's harsh treatment of the young students in her class started to spread, gaining traction and stirring public concern. Thomas's initial attempts to seek justice may have started with limited backing, but the situation changed dramatically when he initiated a petition on Change.org. The campaign quickly captured widespread attention, sparking outrage among parents across the nation and amassing over 2,000 signatures demanding Mrs. Duncan's removal. The issue soon escalated, drawing media attention, local news outlets, upon catching wind of the situation at Pine Grove, praised Thomas for his steadfast dedication to justice. The story then captured national attention, further disseminating details of the teacher's inappropriate conduct to a wider audience, while Mrs. Duncan had not yet been dismissed. The national spotlight on the case brought Thomas a glimmer of hope for significant change. One of the most troubling aspects of Mrs. Duncan's behavior was its potential long-term impact on the children, including Thomas's daughter. Negative experiences at such a pivotal stage in development could have enduring effects, possibly extending into adulthood. Thanks to Thomas's alertness to his daughter's unusual behavior and his proactive stance, he might have forestalled long-term trauma not just for his child, but for the entire class. Thomas's story exemplifies the profound influence of a parent's love and the power of collective action. His determination serves as a beacon of inspiration to others facing similar issues, underscoring the importance of standing up for the well-being of all children. This case also serves as a reminder of the vital responsibilities of educators in fostering a nurturing and supportive learning environment. Being a parent entails setting a strong example for one's children. This often requires parents to critically assess their own behaviors and actions, which is not an easy task but is essential to become a positive influence and role model for their offspring. Thomas, a dedicated father, understood from personal experience that despite his best intentions, certain circumstances remained outside his control. He acknowledged that excelling in parenting did not guarantee his daughter immunity from all life's hardships. Nonetheless, he resolved to confront any challenge that came their way to safeguard her well-being and to help prevent similar adversities from impacting other children. In the educational sphere, it is imperative for teachers to extend their teachings beyond the standard curriculum. They should strive to foster the imaginations and intellects of their students, making a lasting impact on their lives as they grow. Teachers are meant to inspire and nurture not to intimidate or exert control through harsh behavior, as such actions can stifle student development, increasing their anxiety and fear. The narrative of Thomas's efforts to tackle the problematic teaching methods of Mrs. Duncan within the school system underscores the significance of perseverance and advocacy. Faced with ongoing challenges, Thomas clung to the hope that meaningful reforms would be enacted. His conviction in the righteousness of his cause was unwavering, spurred by his belief that the school was jeopardizing the students' well-being due to the volatile temperament of one teacher, realizing that change would not occur without proactive efforts. Thomas was motivated to take a stand, aiming to make even a small difference to safeguard other children. This ordeal was trying for both him and his daughter, but ultimately, it fortified their familial bond. Thomas would not have identified the underlying issues had he not gone the extra mile. With his daughter now in a class taught by a different teacher, she exhibited signs of improvement, highlighting the importance of his vigilance concerning her behavior and well-being. This experience not only made him a more attentive father but also taught him hard truths about confronting challenges directly. Looking ahead, Thomas is committed to supporting his daughter and son advocating for them whenever necessary. Alongside his wife, they form a cohesive unit dedicated to ensuring their children never face the kind of adversity their daughter once endured due to a teacher's bullying. From the moment their daughter transitioned to a different classroom, Thomas and his wife have continued to monitor and support their children's educational and emotional needs, reinforcing their commitment to their well-being and development. At the heart of every hospital, there lies a profound understanding of the pivotal role it plays in protecting the well-being and happiness of children. 
This same essence is captured in the exemplary parenting approach of Thomas and Laetitia, who always prioritized the best interests of their children. This dedicated couple tirelessly devotes themselves to nurturing the growth and development of their three children, aiming to shape them into mature, contributing members of society, armed with both wisdom and compassion. Thomas and Laetitia create a nurturing and stable environment that forms the bedrock of their children's future successes. This environment equips their children to face the myriad challenges and seize the opportunities that life will invariably present. Among their children, Aaliyah stands out as particularly blessed to have such a robust and supportive network in her corner. This support system not only enhances her personal development but also instills in her a sense of security and confidence that is essential for navigating the complexities of life. With the unwavering support of her parents, Aaliyah is well on her way to becoming a well-rounded individual, ready to contribute positively to society. That's today's story. After listening to the above two stories, do you have any thoughts? You can tell us in the comment area. If you like them, please subscribe and like them. See you next time.